All right, welcome to Rochester Youth Baseball League. For today's opening ceremonies, the weather finally cooperated. A couple things. Um, again, the league did a raffle this year. We will have that drawing after, uh, towards the end of the ceremony. Um, I want to thank a lot of people. I can't remember them all, but most importantly, uh, Shrove Landscaping. They helped us put this field down three weeks ago. And uh, without them, it, this would not have been possible. We had a uh, infested uh, army worm infestation on the infield, and so this is all new grass. Outside of that, there's so many people that help out the league, and I want to thank all of them. I can't name them all. I would like to personally thank the board, uh, Fred McLaughlin, Marcus Holderman, Mitch Bowers, uh, oh, Matt Reiner. Uh, those four guys put in a lot of time with myself and uh, you know a couple other, Richard Heisey, uh, Luke Boyer. They really help out as well. They're not on the board, but you wouldn't know it. They, they pitch right in. It takes a lot of people to make this work. So I'd like a round of applause for those folks, please. Individual pictures. Bailey Warren will be at the pavilion. Um, not our pavilion, but the one in the park. She has it set up. So if you have individual pictures on that form scheduled, you will go up there and see her. I don't believe there's any set schedule on what league or what individual, but you will go up there and see her to uh, get those done if you haven't done so already. Outside of that, I'm going to turn it over to Dave Russellman. Uh, again, Red Barn Elephant Ears selling elephant ears. Concession stand is selling food and cheeseburgers. So thank you all for being here. Okay, we're going to start with T-Ball. I apologize in advance for any mispronounced names. Tidewater Executive Tax Service. Tanner Jones. Run to the pitcher's mound, please. Tanner Jones. Grayson Jones. Olivia Ulmer. Jeffrey Ulmer. Adrian Dale. Alexander Venata. Cameron Perkins, Jamison Berry, Kurt Henriot Connor, Logan Huffman, coaches, Trevor Ulmer, Kyle Perkins. It, Ladies and gentlemen, Tidewater Executive Tax Service. <laughs> Next up, Smith, Sawyer, and Smith. Gavin Ennis. Wyatt Hayes. Ashton Rogalski. Berkeley Smith. Carson Furter. Grayson Stiles. Grayson Bebout. And Nathan Fincher. Coach Lane and Smith. Smith, Sawyer and Smith. Next up, First Federal Savings Bank. <laughs> Amelia Bainey. Marley Bainey. Harper Heidi. Eli Zelasco. Maddox Bauer. Asher Lawson. Carl Packer. Alexander Haugen, Gabrielle Haugen, and Bryson Miller. Coaches, Alex Beatty and Mason Heidi. Ladies and gentlemen, First Federal Savings Bank. <laughs> Team Fulton County, R-E-N-C. 
Grace McLaughlin, Augustus Young, Jackson Cloud, Nathan Albert, Nash Reason, Claire Heckathorn, Easton Shipley, Tyler Schwartzel Jr., Brett Calvert, and Xavier Green. Coaches, Bryce McLaughlin and Ben Reason, Fulton County, R-E-N-C. Next up, the Rochester Boat Company, Carter Meadows, Blakely Carlson, Gunnar Chamber, Jeff, uh, Jeff Lockridge, Light and Rowe, Blaine Pitts, Kaylee Meadows, Grayson Johnson, and Bowden Lease. Coaches, Colt Meadows, Cody Rowe, Brian Chambers, Rochester Boat Company. Next up, Road Star Driving School, Wyatt Bush, Brinkley Hunter, Jackson Hunter, Levi Hunter, Wyatt Troutman, Howie Day, Liam Day, Jackson Burris, and Grayson Burris. Your coaches, Joe Burris, William Day, and Jeremy David Drager. Road Star, Riding School. Our final T-Ball team, Rochester Optimus Club. Abel Bowers. Mylon Rainstead. Peyton Hazen. Miles Cheeseman. Harrison Brown. Noah Town, Wyatt Burton, and Giovanni Mendez. Coaches, Mitch Bowers, Green of Bowers, Rochester, Optimus Club. Ladies and gentlemen, your team all teams. <laughs> Next, we've got a Pony League. Up first, Advanced Magnetics Incorporated. Titus Bowers, Jamar Taylor, Dominic Darling, Dawson Darling, Wyatt Jackson, Fulton Newcomb, Hayden Bauer, Camden Venata, Aiden Lynch, Tyler Wise, and Grayson Vance. Your coaches, Miss Bowers and Derek Vance, Matt Vance, Magnetics Incorporated. Your next team in Pony, Eagles Lodge, 21-20. Luke Thomas. Griffin McKee. Harper Howe. Liam Robertson. Jude Brown. Carson Inyard. Ridley Vega. Gil Newton. Gates Newton. Maverick Holderman and Jordan Holderman. Your coaches, Marcus Holderman, Marcus Smiley, Bill Newton, Reagan Newton. Eagles Lodge, 21, 20. <laughs> LG Concrete next. Zayden Johns. Liam Meadows. Asher Smith. Gatlin McMillan, <laughs> Jonah Funk, Brady Gates, Calvin Cheeseman, Eli Sansel, Shane Ritter, Jeffrey McMillan, and Larson Good. Coaches Landon Good and Landon Smith. <laughs> LG Conference.
Up next, Rochester Telephone Company. Derek Heisey. Tyson Eatman. Noah Struber. Struber, I beg your pardon. Carter Malvin. Brenton Smith. Brantley Help. Easton Cox. Carson Dittman. Dylan Ennis. And Manix McLaughlin. Your coaches. Richard Heisey, Kyle McLaughlin, and Stephanie Heisey. Rochester Telephone Company. Soft Waters up next. Grayson Hazen. Keegan Hazen. Alice Gottschalk. Drew Gottschalk. Owen Murphy. Micah Downs. River Moyer. Lucy Downs. River Wyatt. Cohen Wien. And Tyler Hinton, your coaches, Joe Murphy, Brent Downs, and Jake Wyatt. Ladies and gentlemen, Culligan, Soft Water. <laughs> your next team in Pony is Duke Energy. Hudson Frauenfelder. Tyler Rittenauer. Lincoln Meredith. Owen Brown. Easton Troutman, Isaac Gonzalez, Jay Gonzalez, Mason Higginbotham, Dominic Wolf, Declan House, and Kellen House. Who did I miss? Dustin Fraunfelder. Your coaches. Mark House and Brian Rittenauer. Ladies and gentlemen, Duke Energy. Your next team the final Pony League team, Rochester Ford Lincoln. Hoyt Gamble. Graham Miller. Landon Brower. Ryan Vanderwall. Elijah Gustafson. Amara Gustafson. Jim Grosner. Connor Jacobs. Maverick Sartman. Max Mars. Dane Gick. And Colton Wessel. Wessel. Coaches. Adam Dick, Herbert Roser, and Joe Miller, ladies and gentlemen, Rochester Ford Lincoln. Now to the Major League. First up, Beacon Credit Union. Landon Heisey. Landon Hazen. Luke Hazen. Grant Reese. Mason Oliver, Wade Whedon, Griffin Newton, Colton Fear, Asher Merrill, Zeke Sitz, and Titus Sharver. Coaches, Matt Osborne, Justin Back, Bill Newton, and Richard Heisey. Ladies and gentlemen, Beacon Credit Union. <laughs> Up next, Steve Moore Agency. Can you go up there? <laughs> Emmett Leinier. Riker Smith. Mason McLaughlin. Jacob Miller. Lucas Inyard. Jesse Smith. Emerson Seibert. Jacob McIntyre. Cash Casper. Reed Casper. And Taylor Howard, your coaches, Kyle McLaughlin and Blake Passford. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Moore Agency.
Up next in the Major League, Rochester Iron and Metal. Landon Markley. Lucas Dyson. Jasper Garrett. Dave Cole. Parker Cox. Ella Cox. Blake Cox. Aiden Jager. Matthew Ulmer. Grayson Kaufman. Bruce Mendez. And Deacon Cheeseman. Your coaches, Josh Jager and Rick O'Neill. Rochester, Iron and Metal. Murphy Electric is our next team. Gavin Fincher. Eli Murphy. Elliot Brown. Elliot Foley. Landon Zabel. Levi Johnson. Jordan Gonzalez. Abraham Seward. Landon Jackson. And Grant Bollinger. Coaches Eric Murphy, Eric Bollinger. Ladies and gentlemen, Murphy Electric. And our final team of the day, Shepard Chevrolet Hewitt, Van Tizer, Augie Wells, Memphis Miller, Aiden Wilson, Luke Gottschalk, Drew Lawson, Parker Smith, Grayson Bauer, Liam Burton, and Slayer Callahan. Coaches, Matt Lee. Matt Miller, Jacob Lee, Josh Lee, and Cassie Carroll. Ladies and gentlemen, Shepard, Chevrolet Hewitt. And there are your 2022 U3 teams. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the mic Ed Haynes for the opening day prayer. Alright, if I break it, just take the hats off. Go right ahead, we'll say a quick prayer. <laughs> Dear God, thank you for this gift of baseball. Thank you for the opportunity to have this beautiful weather, spend this time with the, the youth and their parents. Thank you for the coaches that put in their time, the board members that volunteer their time. Lord, we just pray that you keep these kids safe. Keep the coaches safe and just help everybody to have a great season. Just be friendly with each other, learn how to win properly and lose properly. In your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, those that are able, please rise. Gentlemen, kindly remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of the national anthem.
last week. Rochester varsity boys baseball coach Corey Good was slated to throw out the first pitch. But because of the uh, Mother Nature mishap, pushed everything back today. So, the, I, would, I was going to say next best thing, but this might be the best thing. Back with the thing. Palmer, Palmer Good. Corey's son, Palmer Good, will throw out, I'm sorry, Corey and Shelby's son, Palmer Good, will throw out the first pitch. He's getting a drink, so hold on. Yeah. Take a drink, buddy. Take your time. <laughs> Little Mac, you better pitch this. Hey, Mac, if Palmer can't throw, does Shelby throw? I don't know. We want to see that. Go, Palmer. Big drink. Drink it all.
it's, uh, it's a work in progress, without a doubt. I'm going to have a couple of board members on and be like Dr. Clinton, like two, and I'll throw them through down. You can hit it. You got it. Uh, Speed up. It's more to play. It's just not you. Yeah. It's just not you. 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 Double, double. Very, you know, I, this league is only as good as the people that put into it and the businesses that, that help us, but Marcus Holderman's a new guy on the board this year. He's our player agent. Hey, Rocking that role. Um, we went from 171 last year to like 213 this year. So a lot of that's to do with kids wanting to play the game, but all that's to do with Marcus getting out there and, and helping in the clinic that we did this year with Hughes with, with the joint with the varsity day. Yeah. On top of that, we have Mitch Bowers. He's our secretary. Uh, Mitch, Mitch, again, I'll tell you this. Well, m both Marcus and Mitch played the game their whole life. They love baseball as much as I do. They want to give back to the kids. Uh, they're both fantastic coaches. Uh, they're both amazing board members, and uh, that's that's the new guys. Uh, Freddie McLaughlin's still still around. Um, he's our vice president. He is the behind-the-scenes guy that what you see is what you get as far as this field, the concession stands, that the, the stuff that nobody wants to do is what Freddie does. And that's our treasure. And uh, he pays all the bills and makes sure that. And we put the power switch on it. It's got good. Yeah, we call it Christ Alvin. Uh, three pitches, and I can bring up uh, Landon Table, the catcher, who is the catcher for Murphy Electric. So, two away here in the bottom of the first inning, no score. We have the Nick Patterson Field, the runner on first base, and Jordan Gonzalez, who get there to do our base hit earlier. So, uh, Sable comes up quick, and he called the entire night last night for Murphy Electric. He's a fantastic job. I had him on my team and Tony. He's a gamer. Never complains. Yeah. Loves wearing the equipment. <laughs> That's a uh, hurdle. That's a huge hurdle. That's a huge hurdle. I'm sorry, just by the catcher. I, uh, I just held the catcher my whole life, but any baseball mind will tell you you build up the middle and you sprout out from there. Absolutely. So, ball one. But you know, we've had a lot of good volunteers. Like I said, Levi Brown, Luke Boyer comes out, helps me mow. I mean, this this takes about six hours to mow. Richard Heisey does a lot. There's, you know, there's just so many, and I can't do them all. We want one score on a miss. Down if you look at the well, outfield fans, last year we had about 40 banners. We were halfway there. Now we're well, completely nice. full. I know there's a few spots over there. We've got seven more on order. But we are 100% full of businesses helping out the Rockets Youth League and giving them a sponsorship out there. back to the league that I mean we are a non-for-profit league we do not people think uh, you know because most cities own their parks uh, within the little league organization ours is privately owned we get no help in the city and we have a question on Facebook page here why they watch the game here is there any sponsorship available anybody are you still taking sponsorship yes we are so we are taking sponsorships. It, it is in the form of banners. You can uh, you get a banner made and then you renew that to get you know. We put that out in the outfield. This year though, um, we can still take the sponsorship. We just can't get a banner made so within the with the shipping and the way Hardesty Printing does it. We can't get it here by the season. Okay. So, but yeah, if you're interested, and I'll get a form to you. Uh, get hold of me. Um, I get a form to you, you fill it out, we get, you, get the ball rolling so next year you can be out there. Okay, very good. <laughs> so we're going to the top of the seventh, uh, second inning. And I believe that Mr. Skype is going to leave up the ball from the third base. Please enjoy this. And that owner will be the first three. 
build on Pyre, even though he changed colors. He was a zebra. But uh, his dad's a former board president, huge part of our league, still always gives back. Um, Good night, Matt. And that's absolutely what it takes. You know? That homer was the whole one outside. Chicken, 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 chicken
other news and notes about the league. Yep. Uh, T-ball. T-ball no longer plays up on the hill. I, that was one of the first things I did this year. Freddie McLaughlin uh, had been wanting to do it, and it was a good idea by him. But T-ball now plays every game on our big field or Tony field. And what's going on during the week, Monday through Thursday, um, their games start at 5.30. So there will be a T-ball game before every Tony or major game. And then our games start at 6 30. That lets the big kids watch the little kids and let the little kids know that we do care about them. And, um, I kind of felt like they were the, uh, the forgotten part up there, yeah. and, and nobody ever saw people other than we went there. So we brought them home, and uh, it's working out really good. Come on. All the way to hell up there. Yep. They're not coming. Yeah. Yep. You're right. Most parents would just get in the car and leave, and I and I get it. I mean, you're not going to park again, come back down. So, but the the other thing is this: the T-ball kids never saw these games being played, and these guys never saw the T-ballers being played unless you have a brother or sister or cousin. So. We're just trying to develop and uh, unify everybody. We've got middle school baseball that plays on the Bay Ruth Diamond. Uh, and uh, it's, it's just uh, trying to put it all together. Hey, Brian. Two. 
Every team in the Pony and Major Division will be seated based on record up until that point. <laughs> it does not. This is our city. Our city tournament only. So you will be seated um, and you will play games Friday and Saturday. There will be a champion in each one to have. Many kids don't get to play the All-Stars or the Travel Ball, so this is going to give you a uh, feel for tournament structure. Within that tournament on Saturday, we're having a home run derby contest. That is okay, tell me about that. Yeah, so the top eight, eight U kids, the top Hold ten, I'm sorry, the top eight, ten U kids, and the top eight, twelve U kids. We're going to have three divisions. Twelve U is going to be hit on a 150 foot snow fence. 10 U is going to be hit on 125 foot snow fence. And 8 U is going to be hit on 100 foot snow fence on this field. And it's big league style. They're going to have walk up music. So as Bruce uh, Mendez takes the ball. Let's go, Bruce. Let's go, Bruce. Ah, Bruce, pick one out and smack it. Stop the third, one nothing, Murphy Electric. But again, that was something that was Derek Vance, so kind of the brains behind that. But how do we get kids interested? What do they want? Or what do they want? They want to hit their own. Well, let's have a home run derby competition. Let's give them their walk-up music, big league style. Let's give a trophy to the winner in each division. Let's, uh, let's, you know what? I'll say it, and I say it a hundred times. Let's make baseball. Sure. Absolutely. Jordan Gonzalez to the plate. Ah!
I'm sorry, April the 15th, that was put down. So it's fantastic. So it is a month old as of yesterday. Oh, no. Yeah. No. But we got it put down on a nice day. Um, we brought all new blackbird in. And uh, yeah, it's going good. I just looked at it though. I know it needs some water right now. But, you know, you got it. It drinks. Lane and Mark, we have absolutely nothing. Two more, I should say. One out. One nothing here in the top of the third inning. Mark, we like to do
Oh, you're out. 
We're wanting to replace the rest of it. Uh, if you don't hit something, you're going to go. You can only stretch it so much. Roddy, you Just over time, the fence takes a beat. And, uh, we're there. We're to the point where you can, uh, you can fix and fix it. But it's time to upgrade it. So we're looking to upgrade in the fence. With that comes the dugout. Uh, our dugout is in our field. Dugout, so you see the
You know, as a game of baseball, there's so much going on with those kids out there, whether it's backing up throws first and third or second, uh, whether, you know, whether it's contributing by the ball hit the gap, you don't catch it, but you turn and hit your cutoff man and you can hit all over the base, and you later get a fourth cut on. There's so much there. And that's player safety. I mean, we, we, obviously we would love for all kids to be the type of where they can catch and protect themselves, but it, it is so important to play left field, and it's so important to catch, and it's so important to play first base. And as the game moves on and up, um, you just get more and more reps in the outfield because more and more balls go out. Yeah, sure. Brandon Markin now pitching the pool, Rochester right behind the middle. We were the bottom of the fourth inning. Rochester right behind the middle. Over on the pony field, the Elks being coached by Marcus Holderman. One on one. Mitch Bowers is advanced magnetics team. So, hoping one of those two, if not both, we want to come over here and jump on and do a little talking. I can't, I can't say it enough, though. You, uh, the addition of those two guys has just really, really. Well, brought right. so much positivity to the league and brought so much uh, extra things that these kids will never understand that they're able to get. So Goody is uh, Goody's involved with us both from the material side of things with the winning edge. We get all of our materials from him. Uh, jerseys, hats, baseballs. Um, Winning Edge has long been a big partner with Rochester Baseball, and uh, just as I was saying earlier, we support our local businesses because they support us. So that role, number one. Number two is the varsity coach. Um, we did a uh, seminar this year with the varsity players, and uh, we're wanting to build that program from a standpoint of our coaches and uh, the coaches people all the way up. You know, Coach Good has wanting to install the way things are done and you know it has to start somewhere and it's just a good Thousand percent. It is these kids learning 
some things that, well, quite frankly, that some of these coaches can't, can't produce because that's why he's a varsity coach. You know, the so these key things, and him, you know, there, there might be a boy that is batting all year and the team might be a little, little off or there might be a chance thing that can be corrected. And getting that kid corrected at an earlier age and seeing it at an earlier age, um, yeah, no, I feel like it's just all part of building a program. I mean, you know, the program that I had always admired and will always admire, and the name synonymous with a baseball program when you live in Rochester is okay, sure. played against them, coached against them. It's almost a robotic process. And it, what we got here? Swift was landed. No, that, that, that can't happen. Hey, Kyle, you cannot re-enter him. The pitcher? Only the starting pitcher can re-enter. Yeah. He can't go back in. Only the starting pitcher can re-enter. So, Landon Markley is done. We're going to try to bring in Matt Palmer, but he is a substitute pitcher, which means the only pitcher that can come back right now is Parker Scott, the start of this game. And since he got his six out, he's actually better. Okay. So, so he, he got his six out. Six out. Six out. Six What's that? He got his six out. Right. Two. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The only pitcher that can re-enter is your starting pitcher. Okay. But if starting pitcher got six outs, he can't come back either. Okay. So yeah, I mean the way it works is you've got. He, he can't pitch either. He was a starter, right? Yeah. Hey guys. Hey. So the only pitcher that can re enter is the starting pitcher. But if the starting pitcher got six outs, he is no longer eligible to pitch. Alright, so we can't put our 10 year old back in. Alright, so we can't put our 10 year old back in. No, you, you, you can't. You cannot re enter a substitute pitcher. So if Landon was pitching Markley, the, the only kid that can re-enter after him is a kid that has not thrown in this game. The only one that can re-enter at this point is somebody that's not thrown in this game. So what is the item that going to have to be the same? Marker or go to somebody bring him in? Yep. But anyways, talking about Plymouth and kind of what they've built, um, just, just watching that grow, I mean, I battled against it as, as, as an eight-year-old all the way up. Um, and I'll, I'll use this guy as an example, Clint Gall, okay? From top to bottom, probably the most successful program that we have in hockey. And it's not successful because he woke up one day and said, we're going you know, to be good this year. We're going to have a state champion. No, it's successful because he invested in that four-year-old, and five-year-old, and six-year-old. He put his time in him, correct him. So I was talking about Corey Good and that coach saying, let's change the kid's stance. Let's fix his hands. Let's find a new hard slot. Language that, you know, maybe a six-year-old will never hear again or not, never heard before. No different than that kid that walks into the wrestling room and says, well, let's, let's work on your stance. Let's teach a single leg sh uh, uh, takedown or a double leg. Again, it has to start somewhere. And he took guard, good friend of mine. You got it, Al. You got I've it. I've played him I know less than 100 times. I'm jealous of the program you've built in wrestling. I love wrestling. Baseball is really well. I want that kind of program. Um, and I have the way, I, I have the means of doing that now. It's just going to take time, and it's going to take um, a lot of people and help. It's the same thing we have. Time, commitment, help, giving back, and, uh, and, back and, and just doing the little things. He started a long time ago building that or making that vision become a reality. He didn't even have to close in the program. And now he does. And now he's going to reap the reward. Absolutely. And I, that, that's what every program should have a desire to do, is invest in the youth. The youth will one day pay back you, pay you back in, in the varsity program, the junior varsity program. And that's, that's what he's seen. And uh, that's what we're
we're wanting to do here. We're wanting to invest in our youth. We're wanting to give multiple kids a chance. So, you know, like for example here, look, look who's on the map. Yeah. How cool is this? And, 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 you know, whether or not, I don't know that she'd ever got a chance. But probably not. She does now. Um, and uh, I see difference in rest. You got a five-year-old that's wrestling. Probably would have never got a chance to wrestle a match from maybe middle school in the old system. Now they're wrestling on the weekends. You know? You got to do it. The only way to get better is to practice. Oh, absolutely. I am a coach that loves practice more than the game. I agree with that. And the game is 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 the ambiance to what you've been doing in practice. But practice is where it is. Kyle Reiner, 
This would be declared the last inning for yeah, time. I'm, I'm telling the coach. Right. That is correct. So when it's declared before the inning, due to the time limit, we do an open inning. So this is actually, even though it says the fifth, we're going to play it like it's the sixth. Um, during league play, non-tournament style, we will have, uh, when, when we do have ties. For two reasons. One is for the player safety on pitchers. At a certain point, you're just out of pitchers. Well, you don't want to continue to ride their arms. And arms. We're not playing for money. We're not playing. For money. Number two is just obviously for the overall enjoyment of the game to keep uh, to keep the game from these kids uh, should not be playing two and a half. Ideally, you don't want to tie, but you know, let's see, we're not hockey, but at the end of the day, it's part of it. So, Rochester Iron Metal will send Ella Cox to the great conference with Blake Cox to the plate. We're in the last inning. We're in the fifth. Iron Metal leads by the four as the ground comes to the plate. We're going to lose the top ball one outside. <laughs> Didn't he win an award recently? 
16 and 1 was that, was that, and, uh, and that transferred off. I mean, man, you talk about a run that was made. Yeah. You know, I learned a lot about that from that season back at the coach. You know, I didn't, I didn't, because I look back on that now, because I was young, I was playing in my middle one, I was young, and I didn't, I didn't let you get the opportunity to enjoy it as a coach. Uh, I didn't let you guys enjoy it a whole lot as a player, because I felt like I needed to keep it wrong. Well, the, the thing about it was everybody knew we were coming in at a few strikes out to the side, setting up for the hunt out to the fifth and the final inning, so it's good to, it's good to get good. But I'll, I'll say this, so we were coming up coming out of Bay Bridge, um, you had a group of guys that that uh, we were talented, and we knew we were talented, but to say we could get over that proverbial hump, we couldn't, we, we would run into our nemesis here or there, um, and we'd always been coached by our dad, and we walked into a, to a team that a lot of us thought we should play varsity, and, and we didn't, we all played JV. And you push, boy, did you ever push. But I tell you what, you know, we went, I think my junior year, we, we I know we won 20 games my junior and senior year. We both won 20, 22, I don't know how many losses, but, but you can look back at that year as the year that started us to develop and push us. And obviously, Hook comes in, and uh, he was kind of uh, the right guy at the right time, great coach. Um, we had a lot of ego. Yeah, he did. He did. He uh, he was just he was a mender. He was a player's coach. I'll never forget him telling us, you know, I don't care about all the awards you've won, this or that, but we're all going to play together. And boy, did we come together. And we, you know, but again, it always ended at fun. It was three A. It always ended at, at the big red machine. But but I look, you know, now I'm trying to give my kids that same experience. All the kids out here, you know, I'm a, I'm a president for all these kids. I want to give them that experience. I want to find those coaches that you remember, and I, and I do. Joe Bowers is another one. I look back on my Little League days. Joe Bowers was pivotal in teaching the game, you know, and outside of our dads and, and certain people. But they, they, the right coach at the right time was you for the, for the JV team. Um, you knew you had all the talent in the world, but just because sometimes you have the talent doesn't mean that it's going to transform to win. Right through. But it did. It's not only, you know. You remember that game? I don't know. Ricky Wilbur was on Thursday.
Oh, <laughs> 